What's up, y'all? Stud Diggy here with Chapter 3 of my Dead Space 2 No Damage playthrough. Uh, in Chapter 3, we're going to be making our way to the Unitology Center. Uh, like, this shit right here just totally fucked me up the first time I played it. Because, like, there's that shadow, so you expect there's going to be something here to attack you. And then you get in here and it ran away and then you suspect that it's coming to get you because you saw the shadow and then there's nothing near. So you've got this expectation at some point it's, and that sound that that shit right there like, oh, my God, that's it. Now I'm going to die. Yeah. So this 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 section here is just well crafted in terms of building tension. And then you come out in this open area and you take a breath of fresh air and you think it's all good. And then this shit happens. Now, you can just melee these guys as I'm doing this way. You know, you don't spend any ammo. So if you're doing a hardcore run or the kind of run that I'm doing, uh, melee is good. And now you're seeing the benefits of the javelin. This is the crowd control aspect of it that I was talking about before. So, you know, you use less ammo overall. Now, if I was smarter, I'd be stomping because they're disappearing and they're disappearing with my loot. So I should have been stomping, but I didn't. So I didn't get as much loot as I possibly could. Yeah, so after that little bit, you get a breather. And we're going to sell some stuff because there's a store right there. And get some ammo. So that's a nice little beat. I like that beat a lot. I like the whole, that whole section where you go in and that the tension just builds and you're expecting something to happen. And then something did happen. You know, that guy jumped out at us, the one that was laying on the floor pretending to be dead but wasn't. Um, you know, in your own no damage run, you might want to use stasis on him. I didn't because I thought I would be able to handle it and I did. But uh, for safety's sake, stasis is a good call in that uh, situation. Now, one of the things that I've noticed now that I am not am not doing the commentary in real time, so I get to kind of rewatch the content, is how much of the assets are reused. So, like this this area here, we're going to come back to it from the other side. It's going to be you know more damaged or whatever, but the overall area is the same area as here. So that's pretty, uh, you know, sort of interesting from a design perspective that they're reusing assets and then we don't even notice it because we're too busy being scared shitless. So good on them. I, I keep saying this game is well designed and it really is. It really is uh, a really well designed game because they can, they're reusing assets and we're not even aware of it because we're operating uh, on the, as a subconscious level of fear. You know, always being afraid, always waiting for something to happen, something to jump out of us, jump out at us. And if you play Dead Space 1, for example, one of the scariest jump scare moments is when you're in an elevator by yourself and a, and a necromorph pops in from the ceiling and uh, attacks you while you're in the elevator. Well, guess what? We've been getting in and out of elevators since the beginning of this series. And so far, nothing has jumped out of us, jumped out at us. So... Like when I was playing through the first time, I kept on expecting that at some point, you know, something's going to jump in an elevator. Okay, so here's an example, by the way, of what I was talking about before in the very first episode or the very first one that I did where I was saying we're going to use this decompression thing as a tool, right? So we just cleared out an entire area of enemies with just one shot. But anyway, so we keep going into these elevators and nothing happened. And, you know, I'm not dumb enough. When I was playing it through the first time, I wasn't dumb enough to think that it would never happen. So I never let my guard down. So every single time I went into an elevator in my first playthrough, I was always on edge, right? So that tension that I talked about before is just a constant thing. They just find so many ways to build tension and maintain tension in this game. And it's just really, really well done. So I kind of bring it up because we're, we're getting close to the point where that elevator thing happens for the first time. And uh, like, you know, it was a sense of relief that it finally happened. But then I was also like, is it going to happen again? You know, do I let my guard down now? So, yeah, it's pretty, pretty good stuff. Pretty well designed concept. To just kind of have that, especially if you're a Dead Space 1 player that you know that's a thing. Maybe if you're 
of Dead Space 2 is the first Dead Space you're playing. You're unaware of the whole getting jumped in the elevator gag. So when it happened to you the first time, you probably, you know, shat your pants a little bit. Um, okay, so here is we're going to have an engagement. I'm just we're going to set up a little bit. Uh, we don't need both of them, even though there are two. We're going to use one because we're going to use the necromorph. That's an input error, by the way. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, we're going to use the necromorph. He's just hanging right there. So he's going to give us two projectiles. So we have a total of three projectiles to complement um, our gear here. And we're going to spend all our nodes. We're going to keep upgrading the javelin. And the reason why we're spending all our nodes is because we're going to get a new one in the, in the next room once we get past the enemies. And really what we're trying to get to, we're trying to get to the special ability where it does the explosion because you can kill multiple enemies with that. And it's just really, really cool. I like the explosion a lot. This is one of my favorite features of the javelin. You electrocute their asses and you blow their bitch asses up. All right, here we go. So we're going to start with the necromorph. Let this guy jump down in front of us. Uh, shoot him in the back. Grab the other one. Finish him off create some space and then finish that guy off and then that's it so we got, we have the the sack guy and then that's a wrap you do not want him to take another stick if he takes another step and you shoot his thing it will kill you because like i've said in the previous episode the aoe on the sack explosion is pretty large so it might have been smarter to just back up a little bit but you know i figured i got it so we're going to get a node here on the left. I really love this kind of zero gravity Superman stuff that's in this game. I think it's really, really cool and really well done. Because who doesn't want to be Superman? I mean, let's get real. So one time I walked in this room and that guy that's just floating over there, he was right by the door spinning. I damn near blew my load, man. I was like, what the fuck? Good God. You know, one of the benefits of kind of doing this this no damage run is that you have to repeat it, you know? And so, like, the fear factor reduces. It doesn't go away. There, there's still certain encounters that, you know, still give me the willies. Um, but it's, it's not as bad as the first couple playthroughs where it was just, like, every sound, everything was just terrifying. Now, I know some people are wired differently and they just don't scare easily. Um, you know, but this is a good scare. This is the kind of fun scare that you kind of want to indulge in. You know, yeah, you get the adrenaline pumping. Um, but some people, you know, like this don't mean nothing to them. Me, I, I enjoy it. I, I embrace the fear as part of the enjoyment of the game and not something to be avoided. I completely with that one, but got his limb, so he's screwed. Yeah, bitch ass. Um, I like stepping on them because uh, it just like takes away their their power, you know, their ability to frighten. Like you get even, like yeah, take that bitch. Uh, you might have scared me, but I just stomped the shit out your ass. So that node room, you always want to get it because there's always a shit ton of credits in there. Um, so always get that one and we're good to go. So we're back at zero nodes because the one that we got in that previous room, we just spent it to get some credits. We're at 26,000 credits. So, uh, good investment, good trade off. And we got another one. Okay. Now this is another example of why I like the javelin, right? Cause of the crowd control right there. Boom. One javelin, well, two javelin shots because the electrocution activation, the secondary fire, counts as, uses, consumes a round. So it counts as two shots, not just one. But I think it's better off than, say, shooting, you know, a shot for each one of those worm thingies. Once again, you know, it could have, we could have done the job by using stasis. But I'm willing to take the chance. Once again, we see the benefits of the javelin relative to all the weapons. 
because of that AOE. Now you can do the same thing with the detonator weapon because it would, you know, once they trip it, they would uh, all get blown up by it. So that's another option. I might just do a playthrough with a detonator. I don't know yet. Okay, so one. The, this is an interesting story beat here because um, Isaac kind of uh, vacillates or sways from sort of being in control and understanding or, or thinking he has an understanding of the nature of the trauma that he's dealing with, right? So right there he says, you're not in the cold. So he's saying, I know what's going on. I have a grip on it. I have a handle on it. But as the story progresses... Uh, that begins to break down, um, you know, and that's a really sort of interesting story be considering how much we know about PTSD nowadays. And, you know, we have all these young men and women that have been in the, the Iraq war and Afghanistan and all this other stuff that are dealing with these issues. So, you know, this game was what, 2011, you know, so we've, we've kind of known about that stuff, but it's kind of present day. Uh, due to Afghanistan and Iraq and uh, school shootings and all the other, you know, the pandemic and all this trauma that we're all dealing with. Um, so it's kind of an, an interesting situation that this character is dealing with those kinds of traumatic issues. And here we are in our society having to deal with those kinds of issues, too. And how it can deteriorate because he, his mental state does deteriorate over time and so even though he kind of started out in a place where he thinks he has a grasp on it that's not necessarily where he ends up and that's not necessarily where any of us might end up so it's a cautionary tale to some extent i hate those fucking things i think i hate them more than any other enemy in the game and i hate a lot of enemies i hate all the fucking enemies in this game <laughs> i have no love for none of them I want them all dead. All right. So um, that one's pretty straightforward. So this is, we're, we're reaching the end of chapter three here. Um, we're going to run through this area where we're going to get shot at. You can take damage if you lollygag. So you want to move as quickly as possible. I have never explored that area because every single time I try, I get shot. Um, so just run through it. So here you see the, the thing for chapter four starting up. Uh, we, I could have just gone straight ahead and did the save, but I'm going into this room because I want to get the node. There's a node in here and I want to get it. And cause there is a, uh, there's a workbench in the save file in the save station room. So I didn't want to save and then come back up here, get the node and then go back down. So I just came up, grabbed it. And then we're going to save, and uh, and that'll be the end of chapter three. All right, so we can't save yet, so we're just going to get rid of some loot, get rid of our junk, so we can buy some notes. All right. So another one in the bag. I'd like to thank you guys for watching and for the people that, you know, hit a like. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, and so that's the end of the commentary. Uh, it will be saving here in a second, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.